1,700 players entered this event. Two players left. This is the finals of YCS Gent. Are you ready? I hope you are. Oh, they're ready. They're ready. So right now we have in red all the way from Germany, the boy, Johannes. Come in, come in, come on in, come on in, come on in. <laughs> cool, man. Like you just ended up playing that last game. Playing it like a clinic, man. Playing your heart out. <laughs> just grinding it out. How do you feel right now, man? The same feeling as before the, at the top four match. Nothing left to lose. Nothing can go wrong. Just play your cards. Have a good time. Hopefully win. That's how it goes. <laughs> oh, everybody, oh, everybody's a winner. Everybody, he's a final. But as soon as he wins, or if he wins, he'll be like, yes! <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be ecstatic. Take a seat, man. And all from the merry old England, Sam playing his spicy, spicy Cyber Orchids deck. <laughs> oh, man. You were. <laughs> As a crowd on his side, this is like the second person. Exactly. He, you're, he, Johannes is accustomed to being the upset. It's okay. So you're the crowd favorite. Try to prove them right. Are you ready? Yeah, like, as ready as ever going to be. Like, it's the final in it. It's just. It's final. It's just final in it. We, we, we are it. We are it. We, we, we Gucci. So, take a seat, man. So, we'll be deciding who's going first. A nine has been thrown. Mm-hmm. And a seven. So, Sam chooses to go first in this final of the West. Yes, we are ready. The crowd is ready. Oh, yeah. Let's head over to the caster's desk. Welcome to the final of YCS Ghent 2019. It all come down to this. We had the 1,800 duelists from all over Europe, if not the world, fighting against each other. And uh, here we are. So This is pretty exciting, yeah. I mean, 1,800, a huge turnout Absolutely. for YCS this early in the year. And, uh, and uh, we had a lot of different countries, Germany being on top as uh, always, I want to say, even though uh, slightly, because it was pretty much around 400 players. But one of them, Johannes, is here in the final, trying to take even one more event for Germany. But on his way, England. So exactly. you're here. We have a UK representative in the final, which is something I haven't seen for a while. Yeah, I think, and uh, England, please don't kill me, that <laughs> Tom Rose was probably one of the most successful lately, but yeah. we haven't seen a lot of uh, other finalists from the UK, I want to say, lately at least. Lately, yeah. So Sam, uh, uh, the crowd favorite, so that's uh, always great to hear. And uh, you can't uh, go wrong with it. He is playing his own version of a deck that wasn't popular at all for the event. And uh, he proved, uh, even on stream uh, just a couple of rounds ago, how explosive the deck is. He can put up very good boards going first. He can OTK going second. So I very think he cool. is uh, his favorite, especially. Yeah, so we, we were talking yeah. about it before. Like, if you're running the Cyber Dragon cards, you've got that edge in that you can. He's, he's cho won the dice round, chosen to go first. But again, if you're Lunar Light, you've got to feel like they, they really, really, really want to go first. But with Cyber Dragon, you can go second and still have some edge going second, which you really. Yeah, Don't which, you which probably gave him an edge because Orcus, if you add all of the variations we had, was the most played deck for the event. Definitely. And uh, Luna Light was our pick to take it. It's in the final, so we could see that happening. But I gotta say that it is not against uh, one of the favorite matchups because, uh, as you were saying, the differences between uh, Johannes and Sam's deck is that they are both phenomenal of going first, but 
Sam's deck can afford to lose the die roll. Yeah. Like, it can easily just uh, get rid of anything in the extra deck. Cyber Dragon, like, yeah. amazing card for, like, clearing through. We saw it in the previous feature match. It could take over Sky Striker Links without triggering Ray. And in this, you can get rid of a Dingirsu, which otherwise can be very sticky. Yeah, or even just go for the Fortress instead of the Mega Fleet and take all of the machines uh, if they have <laughs> other Orcus. Or yeah. If he's running the Fortress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is he's, uh, definitely yeah. having his own <laughs> spice with the deck. Both, uh, by the way, 40 one uh, cards deck, which is something you don't like. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is enough for us. Uh, no more talking. It all comes down to this. Guys, hang on to your seat and let's go to the table. So we've got the hand in for Sam. And we're still waiting for the hand to appear. Johannes, but Sam gets to go first, so I guess his hand is more important. Absolutely. No and, uh, hand traps in the main deck. You were a side. little skeptic about him playing 41 with double cybernetic overflow, which I gotta agree, but at the same time, maybe it is because just like this, you wanna see it so that you can search uh, other cards. Yeah, so you see him taking good use of the new Salamangre Almirage to immediately put a monster in the graveyard so you can use your Cyber Pep. He's going at lightning yeah. speed here. That's something I always like a lot when you are playing a deck that not everyone is super familiar with, and you can play this fast and well. You must have done your homework. Yeah. I think it is something that you don't always see. Uh, the one that comes to my mind is probably Dinka Bui with the Prankit stacks, <laughs> where he just like completely went super <laughs> zoom, fast zoom, with zoom. it. Always burning a bis deck, to be yeah. fair. Yeah. And destroyed the competition. And maybe we see once more uh, someone playing uh, an underdog decks and just taking it. You see, he's not even thinking about this. I it's guess he's, like, this is a standard combo. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fully aware, I guess, that his opponent isn't going to interrupt him. Absolutely, because uh, just uh, to remind everyone watching, uh, neither of them is maining any Entrap at all. So uh, the die roll did matter, but I think that the deck can go second uh, quite successfully Would even you see without them. Kamungus. Yeah, ooh, ooh, that's cool. So that's a good answer yeah. to the Infinity. Or absolutely, he is not playing Entraps, but he is maining uh, three Kaijus and. That decision paid off. Uh, they're definitely a lot stronger against the Sky Striker matchup, but maybe they can put up enough work in, uh, in this too. Either taking out the Infinity or the Galatea to shut off. Absolutely. The Crescendo. Uh, what would you go for here? Just Crescendo in general or Babel is better against like a combo deck? Does he run Babel? I don't think he runs Babel. Oh yeah, you're right. I think it's quite, it's quite yeah. popular, the decision to cut Babel this weekend. Yeah, which is interesting, is even decks running more Orcus cards are cutting Babel. Yeah, which is, uh, I mean, I you can can't play them, yeah. There's, there's, you know, you've got two cards, like maybe Babel's better sometimes, maybe Crescendo's better sometimes. More often than not, Crescendo's more powerful, and then exactly. you might as well just cut the extra card, which is, is a little bit of a brick if you draw it in your opening hand. And especially with the limitation of like the light stage and the trickster engine, at least there you could play terraforming as both uh, an extender or the Babel. Like without it, uh, now it's it just is like a lot yeah. worse. Eh. Okay, so this is a uh, pretty decent board, but the kaiju actually the kaiju deals with one. Good. Yeah, I have a feeling the overflow might be one too much because he's not seen Indeed. the overflow Indeed. either. Indeed. That's the surprise factor that really is going to catch him off guard. Oh! Ooh. But he does play that. What was that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You can see Sam. <laughs> wow. That's great. Where did that come from? That was just insane. <laughs> Crazy. <that. laughs> we didn't even look to see what yeah, the left that would be in there. Speechless, really. Um, damn. Sam's going to have to keep that in mind. He probably. That's the thing, because by the time you get to the final, um, players don't know. Uh, you, you normally know what your opponent is running, right? Yeah. But you, you might not necessarily know that your opponent has a Mega Fleet in their extra deck. That's <laughs> and you crazy. Just yeah. I'm honestly just checking yourself that shocked. was legal. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just, just <laughs> like, is it a, completely shocked. Take any Cyber Dragon wow. monster, I think. This completely changes our view of this. Uh, of this. I mean, what just happened uh, to his board? Yeah, it's all gone. Uh, that really shakes things up. Uh, we, we saw it in previous... Uh, Matches like where Flavio, for example, a player in the top eight, uh, considered adding this card to his extra deck. And uh, I'm very surprised that Johannes did, because usually you see it in decks where the extra deck is not as important, so you have but a lot of Yeah, there doesn't seem like there's much room in this. There's yeah. two whole engines in it. If I'm honest, I, I'm not sure what Sam's waiting for on his overflow. I mean, uh, might as well, but... Because you've just seen him add the Serenade Dance to Ooh, hand. Ooh, and he even... So if you had to discard it. Discards it, yeah. 
Um, but it's paid off for him because he's set a spell. Um, I don't know how many cybers he's got between his, uh, well, in his grave, but possibly a few. But That's still, is that going to be enough? Uh, that was crazy. That's just completely yeah. swung the game. And, and it's something that will come up even in the next game, so it's not like... Yeah, he at knows least it's there, but the it's info, not that yeah. easy to play around it. Oh, and that's very strong as well. Again. Absolutely impressive turn of events here for Johannes. And uh, if uh, anyone was doubting and the crowd favorite was Sam, now you got to give him <laughs> even more credit because uh, he understood that the deck was popular and was going to be here. And He's a seer, truly. Yeah. Like, I, I knew I would need this card right for the fight. <laughs> yeah, because to be fair, like these kind of decisions uh, are great when they pay off. Uh, and you usually think, okay, maybe that's going to happen once during the Swiss. Uh, I'm going to probably get to the top cut easier. But when that happens in the finals, like that's just unbelievable. Yeah. So what do you think Sam does in future to try and avoid that happening? I think... Uh, he just can't make Cyber Dragon Infinity. Yeah. But that just seems really... That's the point of the Cyber Dragon deck, right? Absolutely. There is a way to play around it, uh, which is making your own uh, Mega Fleet in the extra deck uh, zone because it cannot be used as a material for diffusions. So that's a way that you can play around uh, your opponent having it. Um, or you, if you have the infinity in the extra monster zone. Yeah, because but it depends. Because it yeah, requires yeah, a cyber exactly, dragon and a monster. That's one in the way extra to do it. Zone. So like you have multiple ways to play around it, or you can just catch your opponent off guard and let them go first. To be honest, like and then yeah. OTK. But against Luna Light, in particular, it like, doesn't seem very yeah. profitable. He's trying to link summon with those two monsters, and obviously uh, that's not legal because he's yep. got a, a monster in his extra monster zone. He's forgotten. <laughs> he was too <laughs> excited. So now the Phoenix. Uh, it's possibly going to force out uh, the... Because surely Phoenix block? will target the unknown. Yeah, I mean, no way. Just considering w what... Does he he knows the other card. one is crescendo, right? And now so the overflow is the overflow. last line of defense for Sam. How many cyber drugs? He's, he's got quite a few. He's got one in his hand as well. So if he takes out the whole board here... Yeah, to be fair, now the decision makes even more sense of him having it. So... For anyone wondering, we are going to bring it up for you guys. It is an amazingly powerful shot. Yeah, track. it's uh, absolutely insane. It rem reminds me of uh, like Fire Lake back in the Burning <laughs> Abyss days. It's like completely ripping off your opponent field, but it doesn't seem like it is quite enough. Although at the same time, leaving both of the Mothman isn't the end of the world because... They can't turn into a nightmare. Exactly. What's the card that's searching the Cyber Emergency? Um, probably banished the... Uh, One of the... I don't think any of the cybers get their effect when they're banished. Is it the cybernetic overflow? Because it was destroyed, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the phoenix destroys it, so at the end of the chain, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a search with it. Do you think maybe Johannes could have had a read that that's what that was? But you have to force it out I mean, it's it possible, yeah, point. but then, yeah, you, you can't just wait on it, because then the more you wait, the more actual... Good damage cars. it does, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe it gets hit by a Dingus or something. Something to think about, but maybe he yeah. wasn't. He but didn't here, have the, the snipe on the Serenade Dance at the beginning of the turn uh, comes in Andy. Uh, he plays it well by getting the Tiger from the deck. Yeah, that's a nice line you can do. You, you know, you can bounce the on field Tiger and then use its scale effect yep. afterwards. The really cool thing about Luna Light is that you have uh, like very linear plays that are very, very good at doing a lot of different things. But when you are in a grind game, uh, uh, you can also just grind it out, make yeah, some. Yeah, uh, you leave up those Tigers yeah. and all of the Orcus monsters for yeah. next turn as well. And it's really difficult to deal with. And as soon as your opponent just gives you a turn, uh, you have a lot of advantage in the graveyard as well. Uh, let's remember that he also discarded the. The Nightmare with the Phoenix, so that's also there. He doesn't even need to access. Uh, so, so what's his plan now? Okay, so he's making uh, the Nyarla. I think he meant to <laughs> meant to put maybe the Martin under it, <laughs> so he could detach and use the effect. But and now he's going for Curious probably. Let's see. It did look like three dark monsters with different yeah. attributes or so different types even. 
there is Curious, and you can see this this deck does not stop. Like you can have as many interruptions as you want, and uh, it is probably never gonna stop. Like it, it takes a lot to do it, and it's either at the beginning of the turn with something like uh, no material or or a dweller. It's quite hard to do it. That Zephyr is gonna allow him to reuse the yeah. Lunar Light. Where tiger. do you think he is gonna go from here? Like, what's I was gonna ask you that. I'm, I'm interested. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe he's gonna <laughs> set up a. Uh, yeah, I mean the mills he's are gonna, gonna set be up relevant. A uh, ooh, ooh, that's bad. I think. Yeah, the crescendo definitely. Because although you can use one. the crescendo, you can't set it on your field with Galatea. Yep. So I was gonna say he was gonna set up a crescendo, but I was wrong. <laughs> um, perhaps we're gonna see. He's going to go for a Dweller, possibility. Um, or he could just end on a sort of Orcus board with a Dingirsu as well. Yeah, it's uh, there are a lot of different lines in here. Curious having another powerful effect as well, because he can crash the Curious into the Kamungus and add back any card from his graveyard. It's not to be overlooked. And the Nessie's surprisingly big. Yeah. I keep looking away from Kamungus and then looking back and having to work out what it is all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but now, yeah, he decides to buff the Curious, so the crushing option isn't anymore. But I feel like it could have been a very cool way to extend this place, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's one of the less used effects of Curious. Its first effect obviously being extremely powerful yeah. when you summon it to send anything from your deck to the graveyard. It's probably more relevant like in the Minerva like zombie deck, and there you could go back like a soul charge that... That was definitely scary, but here maybe it could have been a better option, but it's also yeah, possible it's there is a, a line where he just finds a way to win. Because remember, Sam has got a Cyber Dragon, well, a Cyber Emergency in his hand. I think that's uh, the app's not updated yet, but I think he's got the Cyber Emergency searched. Yeah. So he's going to have something to do, and that can clear, it threatens to clear anything you leave in the extra monster zone. Or yeah, because even if you go for Dweller, then you have to deal with it. and. It's a threat. So it's quite a puzzle here. Even though Johannes has got all the options he might need, he's still got to figure out how best to use it. Yeah, maybe the crescendo is actually going to be the one that doesn't take him there. But So he's he's got another target? No, but you can still use oh it. Oh, yeah, you can just send yeah. one back. Yeah, of course. Wishing he, has, he had the Babel here, but like... <laughs> Neither player running Babel, in fact. Yeah. This is a pretty technical challenge for Johannes. Absolutely. So that's a link into maybe a Boral Sword, yeah. Using Boral Sword just to clear things <laughs> seems fairly entertaining. Because he still has to use that. I think he is fine the, the way around the game. Yeah, Ooh. okay. Very nice play here. Because uh, I was considering what he still needs to do. He just sends the Nessie and this is enough. This does look like game to me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Very, very beautiful play. I did not beautiful see that coming. play by Johannes. Gotta give credit to him. So, huge round of applause. Uh, that was impressive. Like I was, I was actually just like I mentioned before. I was wondering it, what yeah. he was gonna do, and exactly. then he was like, "Well, I'm just gonna win." <laughs> yeah. It seems it's very rare that you see something like this, especially in the final on stage. To uh, the yeah. pressure. Yeah. To find the perfect line, it's amazing. And now you can see he's just like completely going through the side decks. He has a lot of options, and uh, I mean it must be a bit of a something to think about for Sam here because he's got like he just saw that Overfleet Dragon just completely destroy his opening board. Yeah. So he's going to have to come up with a, a new plan because what what he did in the last game just got blown out, and Johannes didn't use any side deck cards. And here, if he's paying attention, you can notice that his opponent just uh, sided an extra deck card. Which is a tell for the super polymerizations, most likely. Uh, usually could be the Mega Fleet, but he's actually maining it. <laughs> he's already so got the Mega Fleet, yeah, so the Mega Fleet is there to play around. He's definitely prepared, like you, you can argue with it. And the only thing I'm considering is if Sam is gonna allow him to start. It is dangerous. Yeah, I, 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 it, it may like feel correct, but then there is that flip side, you just hang, go, hang on, wait a second. Am I really gonna let. Lunar Light Orcus go first against me. <laughs> I mean, what do you do if they just combo off and, you know... But you really just got destroyed. Like, your opening was so good. And not only did they have the Mega Fleet, they are also maining Kaijus, which you have seen. And they have an explosive deck, like, post side deck. You just saw an extra deck card. And again, if that's not a Mega Fleet, it got to be Super Poly. 
and I, I really got to see that Johannes seems like he has uh, thought about everything for this event. He's definitely thought about Cyber Dragon Orchestra. Like, just look at, uh, at his side decks. Like, he has Super Polymerization, which is pretty useful. He has Nibiru, which compared to the Lunalite deck is uh, not as easy to play around in Cyber Dragon. And even the No Materials are there, which are one of the better cards just against any Orcus deck. So, a really, really good side deck. Uh, seems solid and... But no plan for going first. So again, yeah, you might be yeah. right, Sam, to let him go first. It's just that it is just bold because you know that if you just draw no hand traps or powerful side deck cards, Absolutely. they just combo off. You can just be dead. Yeah. But so we'll have to wait and see that. You well, really got to consider no it. Usually, I feel like it depends on what you're siding. So maybe if we go to a game three, we could see the other way around. Maybe Johannes is the one that says you go first since you have so many cards and you can worst case scenario just use the mega fleet but at the same time we the mega fleet is a lot less um, impactful once you know it's there because there are ways to play around it so sam has got those three different dimension ground in his side deck so that yep. might be enough to make him want to start so let's take a look at this and who is gonna go first who is gonna take the game if not the match and the title of ycs champion so Cyber Dragon Core, which is always a card you want to see, such as any Cyber Dragon. Yeah, Galaxy, so for now, the end looks really good. It looks very well suited for going first. If he can figure out a line around. So he has cho chosen yeah, to go he first. He goes first again, and uh, now, again, no more interruptions from Ioannis, uh, and that means... I mean, Sam yeah. doesn't know that for sure, so he might be fearing of the Nibiru, and it's definitely something to fear. Uh, but can you really play around it? That's the thing. Uh, compared to Lunalite, I know that one way to try and play around it, when you have the Galaxy Soldier, you can try to get to the Infinity, but... Yeah, you can make Cyber Dragon Infinity, but then again, making Cyber Dragon Infinity in the same zone, same thing is going to happen. Mega Fleet is going to come down. Unless he can... I don't think he can clear his own extra monster zone very easily. I mean, he potentially can, because, like, it's tough. But he can't, he can't just do the same thing he did before. That's that's for certain. It's also your opponent can also just use the, the spot in the extra deck. So it's, it's yeah. close. Uh, but that's still like far less yeah. powerful. If they're now you can see that Johannes uh, it's kind of bluffing by like counting the numbers of summons. I feel like he doesn't have it, but you might as well do it. We saw it uh, with uh, Joshua Smith uh, during a future match where his opponent completely bluffed the Nibiru, and in the end, uh, it got him the match. So. Might as well try these little mind games uh, with your opponents. So how does Sam um, best play around the, the Mega Fleet? Fleet? Maybe he, he just hopes he saw the extra deck card that he was just going to side out the Mega Fleet, you know? Yeah. Double bluff. Your opponent knows it's there. They're never going to let you use it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the mastermind that, game. that would be like <laughs> next level, but or maybe he just forgot that it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to do the same exact thing as game one. That would be... We should hope not, but yeah. you never know. Um, it's, it doesn't look that difficult for him just not to leave any monsters in the extra monster zone in this case. Absolutely, but... Uh, because he can just link... Oh, no. Maybe I'm wrong. It does look quite difficult from here. You can also just... Probably, I mean, in this case, when you have the infinity, right? Oh, infinity can... Yeah, you can suck you up can one suck of your it. own That's monsters. That's what I was yeah. saying, yeah. Can it do it to your own monsters? Yeah. That was I was checking, and you can. So maybe that's a way to do it. You just uh, absorb you. your own, or you just send it to the graveyard. It's yeah. a shame it doesn't get to absorb all of the X Y Z materials. Yeah, it just did uh, what we were saying. So he, he used just the double infinity. checking what I was double checking. <laughs> yeah, he can did, he did do that? a little fast. So with the infinity, uh, we were checking. He just got uh, the extra deck monster, so you play around the mega fleet. So it's got to be something Sam is used to doing as well. Absolutely, he didn't even think about he's it. He's so. played, you know, other people might, might well have sided it in, even if not played it in the main deck. But side decking it in is definitely something you've got to think about. Yeah. And now he's going to set up the crescendo, and uh, he's, since he opened uh, the Nightmare, he can send the Orochi as well, which is a nice addition to push some uh, additional damage later on. And the Overflow. Okay. Seems like he was stopping, but he was like, no, I still have something to do. 
Do you like Orochi in general in all of these Orcus decks? I think it makes sense definitely to run it because after you've finished your combo or if you just have an extra Heart Horror, which is definitely something you may not have had a good use for before because there's only two other Orcus monsters you want to use in the graveyard. Then you can just send this as a dark machine. It works with all of your August cards. I mean, we did see it have the the downside, the really strong downside of banishing a skeleton. But if you've already got the skeleton in play, I think it's very, very powerful. Yeah. It can potentially just give you two extra summons and then destroy a card on top of it. So, wow, it can't do both of those things. Oh, and super polymerization is picked up. <laughs> Does he have a, a valid target for it? Uh, Infinity like, is light. Yeah, Infinity is light, so I don't think he has the option to and go for Venom. Fusion Dragon requires a. But at the same time, dark. if you if you play any Dark Monster, then you can Super Polymerization your Dark Monster Galatea, yes. and then the Venom and the <laughs> and the Infinity can be used for Mega Fleet, right? Yes. So that's a way to completely clear the board if he wants. That's wow. gotta, that's gotta be crazy. That's gotta hurt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Although yeah. Sam has got the overflow, so he could use the overflow to destroy yeah, the Yeah, of course, but monster. at the same time then you're completely... I'm not sure you yeah. would, but you could. Yeah. At least he does have the overflow, so once more the decision to main two copies is paying off. Uh, but the super polymerization might be a very important pickup here. He's got a good discard for it. Oh, he's got yeah. three good discards. Four. All of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see if he sees uh, the line. Honestly, I, I think you you can go for it. Like, I don't hate it. Like, if you just super poly even here, like, it seems quite unlikely you're gonna get a monster stuck in the extra monsters. So like, if you do it, like, you can. Yeah, I feel like it makes sense. You just super poly and then you clear the entire board. Yeah, you can discard that yeah. serenade dance as and well. And he sees the line, so super polymerization comes down. It's gonna make the venom, and that means that if Sam doesn't use the flow, you can use the venom and the infinity to make the mega fleet as well. The perfect. Well, I mean, oh. it's not a pair of answers because it's only one. He only yeah. just had the super poly. And Sam's got to feel a bit gutted here because he's played around individually super poly. Oh, and that's true. You can also just uh, attack over it if you feel like it, or like force the negation and then destroy it if that happens with the second effect of Venom. But yeah, the overflow is happening and... Does Venom have an effect when it's destroyed? Yeah, it, the Raygek is your opponent's special summon monsters, basically. So why you would use the overflow? Yeah, it's uh, then the definitely not the, is the brightest ideas, but he probably just fought, yeah. Because if you just let the Infinity die, you've still got the Absolutely, overflow. at that point you just let the Mega Fleet come down and you keep the overflow. This way you have no more negations and uh, Johannes is free to do whatever he wants. It seems like this game will go his way again. Because now if he found a way to OTK through what was there last turn, I can't believe he can't find it now. So. Yeah, he's got the Serenade Dance and the yeah. Perfume. Seems like a little bit of a slip up here from Sam, and I really think Johannes is gonna punish him, so. We have seen him do that before. Absolutely, like he, he, he didn't stumble at all. It seems like he, he knows the deck in and out very well. And I feel like this is like the standard combo even, nothing too complicated, so. Do you think he's, he's got his whole Boral Sword, I have game plan? Yeah. For sure. Like, he even as the R power, like, this end was phenomenal. To be fair, if he didn't pick up that super polymerization, things would have gone completely different, probably. It would have been much trickier there. Yeah. They just took out every negate. Well, here it's just as easy as ABC, really. So. Yeah, he's got the search of Tiger already. Yep. And then. Go through the classic Lunar Light. And you still have a card in the hand for the Nightmares, which you don't even need because you have the R Porter and Engrave you. So you just want to make sure that the last card is uh, nothing, nothing special, but you do know that it's the core because it was searched by the emergency. So nothing to worry about, but want to make sure that you don't mess up. Yeah, Cyber Dragon Infinity. Oh, he's got the Gizmac as well. Yeah. This forces out the Gizmac. And this is uh, beautifully played once more by Johannes. By forcing the Gizmac, uh, uh, he's guaranteed to do pretty much what he did last turn, last um, uh, game. Yeah, using Dingirsu to send. And yeah, then because you send one of Dingirsu and then you usually go for the Boros Ward, so. Oh, and his opponent also can't activate effects oh, no, yep. during the battle phase. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh. is. 
Okay, oh, is so that when it's banished? I can't remember. As the dog comes down. He's got a card. Should be pretty straightforward, I think. Yep. So he's going to go for the Nightmare. And I do think Sam is starting to realize what's going on here. Yeah. I don't think he's got much to say left because he's used all of his interruptions. Unless Johannes is kind enough to roll the Mothman. Yeah. But I don't think he would. <laughs> you, I mean, I if, he's, if <laughs> he's a gambler, then yeah, <laughs> you can use the Mothman he's here. He's a gambler. He's not very good at working out odds. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, your opponent's got no monster effects. Fair enough, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? I'm sure there's a card, but uh, it's very unlikely Sam is Probably, playing but it. yeah, he could, he could have done it. And maybe that was good in a word. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now, uh, just as explained, he's pretty much free to do whatever he wants. He just don't want to mess it up. Yeah. You see the four tricks. He's going to keep going. Oh yeah, there's no no stopping this really. He gets Still the Zephyrus. The, yeah, Serenade Dance to discard the Zephyrus yeah. while summoning a Lunar Monster. So it seems like the pick for the event being uh, this Lunar Light Orcus deck is gonna actually be correct from both of us. But if anyone uh, wants to figure it out how the deck works, I think this is one of the best future matches to do it because Johannes seems to be knowing he's the deck. He's been playing some Perfectly, very long strings of combos that have ended exactly how he's wanted them to. Yeah. In game one, he, it was a lot more difficult than this and he really showed that you can find a way to your game. Uh, we've seen a lot of very good players uh, play oh yeah. with this deck over the weekend and like it, it's not been It was shaky. It was perfect, shaky sometimes, yeah. This has been... A this very is good uh, impressive. Uh, to see again, this in the final is just a very nice sight. There are only few players that can uh, pilot a deck uh, at this level, this well, and in with so much pressure. Like it's not like, to be fair, nothing to take away from Johannes, but we haven't seen him uh, often, like at the top tables uh, or like winning events. So you would expect him to be a lot more nervous. But in his interview, I really liked what he said. He was like. This doesn't change anything from like the top four match. I don't have anything to lose. I'm already happy to be here playing in the finals. So uh, we do see a dweller, nice. which I don't know. I don't know what that's gonna do, but it's got 1700 attack. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it was too <laughs> necessary, but he just don't 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 want to risk it. Okay, so he goes for the Orochi, which uh, which is just like the icing on the cake. Now got a two five cake. dweller because why yeah. not? Because <laughs> he already has the R power to get the symbol, and here you can see as this is just gonna be. Uh, devastating, he can get the um, Boris Ward down, bring back the Dingirsu, and that's so much, so much stuff that he can do. So much damage, yeah. And it's also a little different from the uh, deck list that we have seen. Like, Orochi wasn't in any of the Lunar Light deck we have featured previously, I feel like. It wasn't that popular. Yeah, I can see that because there's less, need, you're less likely to end up with the redundancy in the yeah. Orcus cards as opposed to the pure Orcus, where you do have that. Absolutely. Here we go. And uh, there's the Boral Sword. And then we're going to see the Dingirsu come down. Yeah, Dingirsu comes down. He's going to clear he's got a one free of them. zone, which he does. And then Dingirsu he still has the Orochi. The so, impressive line of plays. I think Sam is starting to realize what's going on here. This is already enough, but he just doesn't want to uh, mess around. <laughs> he's the taking crowd his time. He's going to enjoy it. feeling it, you can see. And the Anshay comes handshake. down. What a match. Wow. Yeah, that was just beautiful play and clearly very prepared for this matchup with the Mega Fleet Dragon. Is actually, we can see there at the very bottom of his yes. list. It's literally <laughs> it's underneath not, the not even on the list. Yeah, it's just like snuck it in. <laughs> wow. It, it's wow. probably one of the uh, decisions that I took at the end because as we were saying, this deck so it's popular have for a the event. Extra deck, yes. surely. I, I'm really curious to his decision and we got to ask about him like, how and uh, why did he think about that card? Uh, incredible. I really like this kind of stories. At the beginning of the day, once more, we had almost 1,800 duelists, and it's, it's incredible. 
So a lot of lot of action from all over the Europe. This, let's remind, it's the first YCS of the season, but we have a lot more action for everyone watching and competing in uh, yeah. in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, again, Germany uh, against the UK, but Germany proving once more that they are one of the best countries for Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Huge respect to Sam as well. He's piloted Absolutely. a very rogue deck all the way to the final. And he's a very unfortunately, the point of running a rogue deck is that people aren't prepared. And yeah. then he got hit with this. And to be fair, this is uh, yeah, this is the beauty of uh, of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like sometimes you prepare a lot, and I think they both did. They both show like a fun, phenomenal, like technical level of play. I would say Sam, he played. He, yeah. he knew exactly what exactly he was doing. Exactly like the even Mega game two, he didn't stumble. Like he knew that the Mega Fleet was there. He exactly and immediately knew what to do to counter it. But uh, when your opponent <laughs> is just like so much ahead of you. Even in deck building, I think what won this finals was deck building more than technical play because they were both monsters in their field. And uh, it really, I'm impressed by it. I'm not always and like easily impressed by players, but you really <laughs> you gotta, <indeed>. yeah, <laughs> you gotta give credit to these guys. So, again, uh, fantastic, fantastic uh, event. Uh, guys, once more, thank you a lot for watching everything we've done. You can go back and check all of the actions that you've missed. We had uh, eight rounds yesterday, three more today, and, and uh, uh, five yeah. for the top 32. Absolutely, which is just so much action, so much Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, at the end of the day, this is just the beginning of the season. We will have more events. The ones London, already confirmed. In the next couple of months, yeah. in fact. London, London is, yeah, pretty much a month away and already. Milan, almost a month after that, right? Yeah. So it's just like back to back Yu Gi Oh! Also, you can just go on the website and check uh, for any WCQ nearby you. Uh, the season also begun, which is uh, both great if you're competing for the world points. This is one of the first events awarding them. But if you just want to play at uh, uh, bigger events from your locals, then just check out those. Uh, We've got the uh, national opens regionals. running in soon. Yeah, so it's uh, just a lot of action, a lot of new cars, a lot of new Yu-Gi-Oh! But uh, I think we're going to have uh, soon uh, a little bit of a new thing for you guys. So usually we go to just an interview and the price ceremony. This time we're going to mix them up so that you can have the impressions with Johannes. And uh, uh, after you have the impressions, we're also going to show you the prices. Because let's remember, new price card in the building. So, dual link dragon, the dual dragon. Yes, so the first link uh, price card for Yu Gi Oh! And, it's uh, kind of a spiritual successor to Ultimaya Zolkin, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Looks very similar. It is the similar link version. Summoning out a. Dragon yeah, the tokens, uh, dragons. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely on the same flavor, and uh, it is something that if Johannes uh, just was uh, so much ahead of everyone to be building, having. Uh, one of the few copies available in the world so early, maybe he can find some cool deck to <laughs> exploit the, the new prize card. So uh, again, uh, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure to watch this. Uh, and I want to also thank uh, every one of you guys for watching, but also all of our colleagues. So for this time, not only do we have me and Tom, but uh, Leo, Sebastian and JJ back, which I think all did a fantastic job. So. Exactly. Uh, if you guys had any feedback, of course, feel free to message even any of us or just uh, on Facebook and everywhere on social media because uh, we, we enjoyed this event and uh, uh, it was definitely a great one. Anyway, uh, once more, again, thank you. And now let's go to JJ and Johannes for the final speech and ceremony. All right, we welcome you to the prize ceremony, YCS Gent. Here today with the uncertain Johannes, I asked him a few times, Hey, how are you feeling, man? You know, semifinals, he won it. He was like, I don't know, maybe just before he sat on for the finals, he was kind of contemplating, ah, We'll see how it turns out. Do you feel confident now? Do you, do you think he won now? Uh, it turned out good, it shows, so I do. I really do. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, what can I say? Um, I thought this was the best deck in the room the most unfair deck, so I was kind of certain I could top, but go like first YCS top, go straight to the finals, straight winning the event. And I have to say, like people wanted to talk me into not siding, uh, not extra decking this mega fleet. I did, I never summed it the whole tournament and then the finals it came down, it was all about, it, it, it just had to happen. So it was destined to happen. So we'd like to congratulate him on winning uh, his copy of Duelist 
Legacy, the, 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 the Switch game, which is kind of cool. That's nice. That's awesome. Your Nintendo Switch. You own an ultra copy of the Dueling Dragon. The first one, right? The first Link prize card. It's pretty dope. And you know what? Yeah, we're not going to forget something else. Your first place trophy, man. So, is there anything you want to say? Any shout outs you want to give? Thank uh, to everyone who supported me. My local store, Berlin, Berlin. There's a German Open the first uh, week of October. So, come, come there. Great store. Uh, Everybody for testing, for theorizing, even people who are not able to play at this moment, just like, I have this idea on certain ratios, let's, what about this, uh, like, like just, just everybody, like, who talked to me about Yu-Gi-Oh! personal, that just supported me in the last, like, couple, two weeks, like, leading up to the event, yeah. All right, you could hold your head up with pride, you did, your countrymen proud, congratulations, man. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for stopping on by our YCS winner right here. We'll see you guys next time in YCS London. Till next time.